Hello and welcome to Lush Turning's Video On Demand Library. My name is Matt George and in this video here I will be demonstrating how to back up and restore your Cisco IOS image to a TFTP server. Now if you Google TFTP server I'm sure you will find a boatload of them for download on, on Google but uh, if you're anyone knows like me I would definitely recommend that you look at SolarWinds. They offer a free TFTP server and I will be posting a link next to the video where you can go and download it. But uh, they do require some information, such as your uh, name and contact information, and so on and so forth. But if you're running Linux, then no need to fear. Most Linux distributions include a TFTP server in the distro. So for the video here, I've already downloaded the SolarWinds TFTP setup file, and I'm going to go ahead and execute it here. And while that is loading, I'm going to take the time to definitely uh, make sure that you uh, check your firewall, whether you're running Linux or Windows. If you're running a firewall, chances are it's going to cause problems. You won't be able to TFTP a file to the uh, the TFTP server. And if you're running Windows, you can't add an exception. Or if you're like me, I just disabled it completely. But as you can see, Windows does not recommend that. Anywho, moving on, let me go ahead and click Next here. And of course, you have to accept the license agreement, otherwise you can't install it. And the username and company name are defaulted to the Windows installation username and company name. And as you can see here, you have the option to install the application for all users of the computer or just the current user that you're logged on as. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here at the default. And now we have the option of choosing the destination as to where we want the TFTP server to install to. I'm going to leave it here at the default as well. Click Next and go ahead and click Install. Now that the installation is finished, let me go ahead and click on Finish here. And as you can see, we have a nice new icon here on the desktop called TFTP Server. So let me go ahead and click that and load it up. And as you can see, SolarWinds TFTP server is a really simple program. All it is is a single window, and we have three boxes across the bottom. The first one here being the root directory that the TFTP server uses to uh, store the files at, where uh, when you request a file from the TFTP server, this is the uh, directory that the TFTP server will retrieve the file from. Or when you send a file to the TFTP server, this is where it will stick it. Now the next box over here is the IP address of the network card that the TFTP server is currently using. You can change this and I'll show you how to here in a second. And as you can see the TFTP server service is stopped. So in order to start this we need to go up here to file and configure and go ahead and click on start here. Now I'm sure you've noticed that we have a nice little pretty icon down here in the system tray and you can disable that by unchecking this uh, box right here. And like I said earlier I was pointing out to the TFTP root directory. You can change this as well if you like by specifying a directory here. And this little box right here is pretty nifty. If you uh, check mark this box, what the TFTP server will do is uh, rename the uh, file that you're sending to the TFTP server if the file already exists in the root directory. And like I said earlier, you can also change the NIC on the uh, TFTP server if you have multiple NICs in a machine that you're running the SolarWinds TFTP server on. Now, Running SolarWinds as an NT service does pose a security risk, meaning that people can send you viruses or malware or porn and perhaps get you fired. But uh, you can take some uh, security precautions, such as setting the TFTP server up to only send files or receive files, or you can set it up to do both, which is what it does by default. And you can also apply some IP restrictions, meaning that the, uh, the following list right here, if you add certain IP addresses, you can limit the communication to the servers to a given uh, range of IP addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here at all IP addresses as well as send and receive. And now that the service has started, I'm going to go ahead and click X on this and it will minimize down to the bottom corner. And now we are ready to get our feet wet. As you can see, I already have a connection to one of my lab routers and I got a pretty cool uh, host name on it. I'm a router. That is awesome. First off, it's pretty obvious that in order to back up and restore a Cisco IOS image, we need to have IP communication between the Cisco device and the TFTP server. Now, as you can see, I have no IP addresses or anything assigned to this router, so I'm going to go ahead and configure an IP address for the Fast Ethernet 00, 0 interface, so interface F00, IP address 10.1.1.1 with a subnet mask of slash 24 and of course if you don't bring the interface up it's not going to do you no good so and since my router here in this lab has a dedicated subnet and in order for it to communicate with the tftp server i'm going to have to specify a default route so ip route 10.1.1.254 
I have a router between the uh, lab router here as well as the network that the TFTP server is on. Now, if you're doing this on a laptop or a desktop and you have a connection to the Cisco device that is on the same subnet, then you won't need to use a default route. But uh, for this demonstration, unfortunately, I have to use one. I'm going to go ahead and ping the, uh, the default router. And I have a connection. If I press up again, it should get 100%. Now I'm going to go ahead and ping the TFTP server. I believe it's 105. Let me check. Yes. And as you can see, I can reach the TFTP server. So now we are ready to back up an image. Let me go ahead and see what's in flash here. And as you can see, this is a 2600. It's a 2651XM. And I'm currently running 12.423. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and back up this image that is currently in flash. So I'm going to use the copy command, flash, semicolon. And if you have multiple images in the flash, what you can do is type out the, uh, the name to the, the most unique character. Let's say, for example, if I have two images here, and one is C2600, and one begins with A for Advanced Enterprise Services, or one begins with I for IP services, you would type out the most significant character and then press the tab and it would automatically fill it in for you so that is a pretty cool feature and tftp and what it will do is it will prompt you for the ip address or the host name of the tftp server if you're running name services you can use a host name but in this uh, video i'm just going to use the ip address 20.105 and it will accept the uh, default name that you selected previously so i'm just going to hit press enter here as you can see the copy has started and if we check it the uh, SolarWinds TFTP console, you can see that the uh, copy has initiated and it has received a connection from 10111 and is putting the file uh, 2600 12.4 Advanced Enterprise Services in the root directory. So if we go to my computer and check out the root directory here, you can see that the file has already been created. And once it's finished copying, it will go ahead and place the file there. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, wait for the file to finish copying, and I will return after it's completed. All right, as you can see, the uh, transfer has completed, and it took approximately 244 seconds. And if we go and check the TFTP root directory, you will see that the image is there, and you can see it's 29,227 kilobytes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to effectively upgrade this iOS image. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the root directory. And I've already downloaded a new image here. This is a Advanced Enterprise Services 12.4.15 Tech Train Release 8. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click here, rename it, and copy the name of it. Because unfortunately, we do not have the option of tabbing it on the uh, copy from TFTP to the router. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy TFTP flash and specify the IP address of the TFTP server 105 and I'm going to go ahead and paste in the name that I copied dot bin and the destination file name I want to leave it as that and it will prompt you to erase prior to uh, prior to copying the file because there will not be enough space in flash now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here as the uh, router is copying the image from the TFTP server into the flash I will return after it's completed well, my upgrade or restoration, as you can call it, has completed. And as you can see, it took approximately 405 seconds and it was transferring it approximately 85,000 bytes a second. Now we can ver verify this by doing a directory flash command. And you can see that the image is indeed in flash now. If you upgrade a router, be sure to uh, make sure that the image that you're upgrading to is supported on your router, which include, uh, do you have enough RAM as well as do you have enough flash where the image can fit into it. Well, uh, I hope this video has been helpful for you, and thank you for viewing.